In the first devlog I showed you how Immortus and Portus evolved from a questionable sketch into a finished game jam prototype. And here is how it used to look like after just 3 days of work. As I said back then, the only important thing left for me to do was coming up with creative levels, so that's what I dedicated most of my time to during the last 2 months. Another important feature missing in that prototype were time goals for levels. I didn't want to have to adjust the time goal values all over the place in Unity, so I decided to try storing all of them in a single Excel sheet. Later I realized that this is only really useful when you want to read data, but not to write it, so it wasn't an appropriate method to use for saving level results. However, I don't feel like this time was wasted. I'm quite certain I'll need this technique when it comes to localizing games in Unity. A bit later I came up with a new type of hazard. In addition to simple dots and lines, the game now has segmented circles, which, now that I think about it, somewhat remind me of a Color Switch mobile game. At around day 10 I realized that Immortus Temporus also reminds me of my favorite so-called GIF animations for perfectionists, in which everything lines up perfectly, moves very smoothly and seamlessly loops for eternity. I really, really wanted to capture this feeling in the game. I wanted players to feel like they are in a world of mechanisms that never fail to be perfect in their movement. Many levels created with that idea in mind look impossible, but they're actually very easy if you manage to figure out what to do. When I was tired of rotating and moving objects, I figured out I can spice levels up with hazards that disappear. It's a classic trick, but it works in a very interesting way in the context of this exact game. The mechanic I introduced next were the walls with hollow tunnels in them. I didn't want hazards to randomly teleport and go over or under the wall, so I created these tunnels which allow hazards to pass through, but still stop the player. In addition to that, they make it so that hazards are always visible to players, which helps them time their actions accordingly. Since I'm working in Unity, doing something silly like adding physics to objects takes just a couple seconds. Thanks to that I discovered that the Sharon Gun from Naruto's universe was just a bug all alone. One of the mechanics I hate in games is long restart times during which you can't do anything at all. In the past I was rightfully blamed for it in the reviews to Nary. It is my first commercial game which back then used to take like 10 seconds to load each time you died and believe me it happened very often. However today I think that if you are playing a game in which you are bound to die a lot you must be able to respawn as fast as possible. My answer to that dilemma? Instant respawns. They used to look a bit too snappy at first, but when I added a respawn effect it all seemed to click together. Another thing I really don't like are non diegetic interfaces. In other words, I don't like the user interfaces which the inhabitants of the game's world cannot see. For instance, I decorated the main menu in Shatris to look like it's a part of the game process. It doesn't use any words and instead just guides players with the help of cryptic runes that also appear in the levels of that game. Moreover, the rules of changing colors and soundtracks work the same for both the main game and the aforementioned menu, which in my eyes creates a nice permanence in the game design. I pushed this idea even further in Immortus Temporus and made the menu and level result screens work exactly the same as the levels in that game. And it doesn't just look like that, these things actually use the same scripts. This is possible thanks to a modular design of the game, which allows me to constantly break my own rules. One example of me breaking them happened when I realized that I don't have to stick to simply altering or moving the hazards. I can actually move the player spawner or any other object in the game. This eureka moment allowed me to make quite a few interesting game scenarios and added a few more puzzle elements to Immortus Temporus. When I thought I completely ran out of ideas on how to avoid repetition in new levels, I was just laying on the couch with a sheet of paper and a pen in my hands. All of a sudden I remembered the mirror effect that I saw many years ago in The Binding of Isaac. There is a companion in that game which mirrors your movement relative to the center of a screen. I've already mentioned how I experimented with moving the player's spawner, but this time instead of predefined paths, I used player's movement itself. This way if you die, you switch places with a spawn point and keep moving in the same direction as before. And thanks to that you can even get into places that were unreachable before. <laughs> but alright, I don't want to spoil too much of the game and I'll leave the best tricks for you to discover once it comes out. Hey, but you know where I spoiled the hell out of my games? You're right, it's on my Patreon page. If you are interested in how my games are made and would like to see behind the scenes of what I'm working on, that's the best place to visit. Anyway, by the time you're watching this video, Immortus Temporus is most likely already finished and is getting ready to be published.
I'm very excited to hear what players will say about this game, because I'm truly proud of how it came together. This project is something I loved working on, and the game it became is something I'd love to play myself. I can definitely see myself working on something as challenging or speedrun oriented as this game again in the future. If you have any questions or would like to talk about Immortals and Boros or game dev in general, consider leaving a comment. I try my best to respond to each and every one of them. And that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Farewell.